frequently in the preaching of the word. He is a prophet. He prophesies. He lays hands on the sick and they are delivered and they are healed. He hears from God and he speaks, thus saith God. He is married to one beautiful wife. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. He uses a word, but he will, he will use that word when it gets shared. I don't want to think more highly of myself than I ought and bite my tongue. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, help me in standing and celebrating as we make way for and receive the man of God, minister. Come on, come on. Let the, let, 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 let the anticipation. Be, yeah, minister. Minister. Shama Chambers. Come on, praise God as you come. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, just lift your hand and give him praise. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Indeed, you're a good God. You're a great God. You are awesome. And Father, we just want to thank you for the chains and the shackles and the strongholds that are being torn down today. Indeed, oh God, we are careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus name somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah come on somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah amen God is a good God I am honored and privileged to be here today uh, to be sharing a, in this wonderful conference amen I want you to put your hands together for the Holy Spirit that is indeed in our Mids. Amen. You may be seated for a minute if you can. Amen. I, I, I am honored. I am humbled. I don't take this opportunity for granted because I see where this conference is going. Amen. And I know that very soon it will be international and I can say that I was a part of it. Amen. I, I want you to uh, put your hands together for my big brother and friend, Apostle Tevon Brown, uh, a man of God that believed in me even when I did not believe in myself. A man of God who saw something in me even when I didn't see it in myself. Amen. A man of God that would come and share his lunch with me and encourage me. Not only uh, with words, but sometimes when I'm broke, he would say, man of God, here is a thousand dollars, man of God, here is a hundred dollars. You know, and he has been there in my life when nothing never gone. Amen. And he stuck around and he was there and he encouraged me. So I want you to put your hands together one more time for <laughs> Apostle Tevon Brown. Amen. I want you to give God thanks for the, the warrior. The trumpet, mighty man of God, Apostle Aquino Hamilton. Yeah, man of God, you know, we, we share the first, we, we share the same middle um, name. My middle name is Aquino. Yes, yes, yes. So we are brothers indeed. Amen, amen. I also have with me my other big brother. I have, I have a lot of big brother tonight, today. Nobody cannot run up on me. I'm, I'm, I'm struck with big brothers. I have a minister, Ian Baker, here. Amen. Put your hands together for him. He's indeed the preaching machine. Amen, amen. This, this man preach and the play shake. Amen. So I salute him, man of God. Thank you for being here. Minister Kajim, God bless you. Uh, and, and Prophet Junior. It says Malan. I don't know how to pronounce huh? Mahalan, mighty man of God. God bless you, sir. Just wave your hands and let them see you. Mighty man of God. This man of God carries a unique grace and a unique anointing. And I salute you. Amen. And everybody that I know here, God bless you. It's good to see you. If I start calling name, I'm going to get in trouble. Let's dive in the word. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am ready for the word. 
anybody knows me that know they know that if you preach with me i'll be out of here in no time and i don't want to get in trouble i want to go home to my curry goat and my white rice so i want you to put your hands together for my pulchritude and us splendiferous magnificent wife amen just, just stand and wave honey let them see you amen hallelujah she's she's off the chain in jesus name amen amen hallelujah but look at your neighbor and say neighbor i am ready for the word come on look at somebody else and say are you ready for the word i want you to turn with me your bibles to the book of first samuel chapter 17 and we're going to read verses uh, 32 to about 35. When you find it, just stand on your feet. Amen. God is up to something. That is 1 Samuel chapter 17. Amen. Let's see where the Lord wants us to go. I'm popping one of Pastor Brown's style today. He, he knows what I mean. Popping one of, one of Rev Tev style today. If you find it, just say, I am in the word. He, he knows what I mean. I don't want to say it and get you guys all messed up. <laughs> and it says from verse 31 to about 35. And when the words were heard which David speak, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out of after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Let us read that one more time. Thy servant slew him, both the lion and the bear. That was a question by Saul. And David replied, And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. God, let us pray. Father, we honor you. We worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we thank you for everything that you are doing right now. Father, we know that angels are ascending and descending on this pot of ground. Father, we know that something is about to break in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Your man's servant declared it that it's already broken. And Father, we thank you, O oh God, that there will be no limitation and no restriction that will be able to stop us from going up higher. Father, we decree and declare, O oh God, that the portals of heaven are open and the portals of hell, they are shut. Father, we thank you that every solution that your people, they are believing you for, they will receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we rebuke the devourers of the enemy and we decree and declare that there is not enough demon in hell to stop what you're about to do today. Father, we thank you for breakthroughs. Father, we thank you for miracles. Father, we thank you for open door. Father, we thank you for opportunities that will reveal themselves Self. And Father, we are careful to give you back all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we tell you thanks while we clap our hands and we shout, Amen. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't leave me because I'm not going to be long. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, it is time to come up higher. Come on, look at somebody else and say, Neighbor. It is time to come up higher. It is time to come up 
higher. It is time to come up higher. You may be seated uh, for a minute. It's time to come up higher. God wants all of us to go higher. He wants all of us to go to the next level. A matter of fact, the Bible says that he wish above all that we should prosper and be in good health. And we will prosper as our soul prosper. So God wants for us to become the best version of ourselves by growing and going to the next level. Are you here with me today? And what we have to understand is that we cannot go higher without prioritizing growth. If we want to go higher, we must prioritize growth. Are you here with me? Because there is no going higher without growth. There is no going higher without growth. Because God wants for us to grow up to our next level. He don't want for us to be thrown up into our next level. Because anything that is thrown up will always come back down. But anything that grows up will always stay up. Are you here with me today? So, so God don't want for us to be thrown into our next level. But God wants for us to be grown into our next level. Because whenever growth becomes a priority, your next level becomes inevitable. My God. Whenever growth becomes a priority, your next level will become inevitable. You, you don't have to worry about being the best preacher. You don't have to worry about success. All you need to worry about is growth. All you need to worry about is growth. Because whenever growth becomes a priority, your next level becomes inevitable. Inevitable. The next thing that you have to understand is that you cannot give unless you grow. All of us in here, we were called to give because there is an anointing that is upon our life. The, the, there is a calling that is upon our life. The Bible says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you and I have ordained you as a prophet to the nation of the earth. I'm not saying everybody is a prophet, but the principle there is everybody was given a purpose before the foundation of the earth. But, but you cannot give up your gift and you cannot give your purpose unless you grow unless you grow you you your seed looks good but the seed won't benefit you until it grows are you here with me today so so we must prioritize growth because the bible says that we are like unto a seed that is planted by the rivers of living water so the fact that you are planted it means that you are expected to Come on, work this with me. You are expected to grow spiritually. You are expected to grow emotionally. You are expected to grow mentally. And, and the problem that we have believers is that we somehow think that we, our spirituality is going to grow as our physicality grows. And what we have to understand is that your spiritual, your physicality grows in time, but your spirituality grows in discipline. Are you here with me today? Right. Your, 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 your physicality will grow in time, but your spirituality will grow in discipline. Are you here with me? And, and the next thing that we have to understand, the next thing that we must understand is that growth is not the only important, but continuous growth is important. Wow. Because the Bible says that God moves from level to level and from glory to glory. So a sign that I'm connected to God is that I'm growing in every season. Every season you meet me, I'm going higher. Why? Because I'm connected to a God that is moving. Are you here with me today? So, so growth is not only important, but continuous growth is important. Now why is continuous growth important? Because some things that that was attractive on your previous level can be unattractive on your current level. When you were a child and, and mommy said that you're not going to get any ice cream, you would just drop and roll and cry. Now if you do that as a man, I'll slap you personally. Because it, 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 it was attractive back then, but it's not attractive now and that's why paul said when i was a child i spake as a child but when i became a man i put away childish thing because what can be a solution on your previous level can be a limitation on your current level 
I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not right here what, what could be a solution on your previous level can be a limitation on your current level I don't want to pick on anybody personally but if you look at women who are normally slim in body they are very slim women like those they, they, they are slim in body but they are strong in words and in high school, you had to be strong in words because they used to pick on you a lot. So you develop your strength in your words that, that you will make a big man cry. So some things that one, one, when I was in high school, I'm not going to repeat what she said, but one, one young lady told me something and I tell you, it caught me in pieces. I'll, I'll tell you half the year. But, but that used to be a solution when you were in high school. Yes. But now that you are married, as soon as you feel threatened by your husband, you start to retaliate with those cutting words. My God. And, and what was a solution back then is a limitation now. And what you have to prioritize is continuous growth. It's looking into yourself and say that worked back then but it's not working back now and if you don't value continuous growth you will become frustrated because you're applying a solution that used to work but no it's not working and I'm mad with God because what used to work back then it is not working now I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not so we must prioritize continuous growth but in order for us to grow, we have to become vulnerable. Because you will never be truly healed until you become truly vulnerable. So you must be at a place in your life to say, God, I don't know what to do and I need your help. Yesterday, I had to run to one of my mentor's house just to get some advice. And be vulnerable. And he said to me, he said, he said, son, I'm telling you, you're wiser than I was. Because when I was on your level, I, I would never ever do this. But it's because I prioritize continuous growth. My God Almighty. Well, well, when God came down to fix Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve was hiding. And God is saying that I cannot fix what you're covering up and you're trying to hide. The problem that we have and the reason why we are not going to the next level is because we are covering up some things too much. And God said, if you don't reveal it, I cannot fix it. My my God, we have to be at a place in our life where we value success over pride. Let, let, let me leave that right there and move on because I see you want me to come out of your face. The next thing that we must understand is that it is not only what you're willing to do that will allow you to go to the next level, but it is also what you're willing to bear. It is not only what you're willing to do that will allow you to become great or go to the next level, but it is also what you are willing to bear. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what is it that you're willing to bear? Yeah, 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 work this with me. Look at somebody and say, what it is that you're willing to bear? Because one other thing that we must understand is that certain levels will not be unlocked by doing, but some level will be unlocked through endurance. And, and, and some people get mad with you because they're doing what you're doing and they're not getting what you're getting and because of that they're mad with God I'm, I'm doing everything Apostle Brown is doing but I'm not getting the crowd that Apostle Brown has yeah 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 be, be, because whenever we face difficulties the first thing that we do is we look for an escape I'm going to hit it where it hurts. We, we look for an escape. We cut off everybody and we ghost everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to endure anything. So it is easier to cut you off than to deal with the real issue. Than to deal with the real issue. 
I, I love it when the church is silent. I'm, I'm no longer in, in, in excitement. I'm into empowerment. So, 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 we, 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 we run and we try to find an escape because we don't like to endure anything. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have to endure. Whenever God puts us in process, God don't put us in process for us to enjoy the process. God put us in process for us to endure the process. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you willing to endure? Are you willing to endure? What, what, what we to understand is that David was not anointed to kill Saul. David was anointed to endure Saul. David went into Saul's life. I don't want to rush the message. When Saul needed him the most. Yeah, yeah. And David brought the solution. And yet still, Saul wanted to kill him. All of David's life, Saul wanted to kill him. And when David was placed in the position to kill Saul, David said, I'm not going to do it. Touch not the Lord's anointed or do his prophet no harm. Because I was not anointed to kill Saul. I was anointed to endure. In other words, there, there are some battles that you were not anointed to win but you were anointed to endure yeah 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 God will put you on some people who get on your last nerves but God said don't run endure it God will put you in a ministry where it seems like pastor is preaching on you and talking about your business but God says stand and endure because the race is not for the swift and the battle is not for the strong but those who can endure Endure. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, endure. When God and Paul went to God and said, God, remove the thorn out of my flesh. God said, I'm not going to remove it because my grace is sufficient. Just endure. Man of God, you gave birth to this conference because of what you have endured. You will never give birth if you don't learn how to endure. There are so much potential in us. But if we don't learn how to endure, you will never give birth to those potential. Because it's going to be rough, it's going to be tough. But endure. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, endure. I feel my help coming already. Look at somebody and say, endure. You will cry sometimes, but endure. You will walk from puppy into Portmore, but endure. You will feed on mackerel and rice until it's climbing. But endure. They will drag your name all over the city because of the mistakes that you have made. But endure. I'm a product of endurance. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. I wish I had about seven person right here that will just lift your hands and say, God, help me to endure help me to endure help me to endure Woo. everybody has to take up them cross and follow me endure 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 pastor Kino it seems like you're being more prosperous than I am but I'm not gonna grudge you and bad mind you I'm gonna endure oh God almighty I feel preaching but let me just quench it for a bit the next thing that we have to understand the devil is a liar the next thing that we have to understand is that endurance let's just turn down the monitor fix what needs to be fixed quickly the next thing that we must understand is that endurance has the ability to change your appearance endurance has the ability to change your appearance Pastor Kino I know that we need to both go to the gym and work off the belly. You're coming, you're coming. 
We need to go to the gym and work off the belly. You start here. Then I, I can't even look at you. But if you go to the gym for six months consistently, I can promise you it will change your appearance. But the gym is not an easy place. Apostle Bartley, one of my best of friends, he called me the other day, man of God, I'm going to the gym and I'm working off the belly. I said, go man of God, go. He went to the gym, Prophet Mahalan, and he went and he tried out every equipment in one day. Oh, we have, the, we have the gym instructor here. He went to the gym and he went on every equipment in one day. And he called me and said, man of God, never ever again am I going to the gym. Sore to the core. He said, never again am I going to the gym. But if you endure the gym for six months, it will change your appearance. Because, because endurance has the ability to change your appearance. When you look at Joseph, Joseph endured the hatred of his family. He endured the pit. He endured the promotion. He endured the persecution. He endured the prison. And when God elevated him and put him in the palace and his family came, his family could not recognize Joseph because Joseph had endured the hardship. So it changed his appearance. My God, you have to understand that when Jesus was crucified, and he was resurrected the disciples could not recognize him because the endurance of the cross changed his appearance God is saying to somebody that if you endure what you're going through I will change your appearance your spiritual life will change your preaching habit will change your prayer habit will change your prophecy will change only if you endure don't trade comfort for endurance go through the end of pain it's gonna be rough but don't trade it for comfort don't trade it for per temporary pleasure or temporary sweetness go through the cross go through the pain and no believers that when you're going through the pain the devil can only do so much and no more because if God has his hands on you the devil cannot defeat you. I wish I have about seven persons right here that will just say that I'm enduring my cross, enduring the process, enduring the pain. It's rough but I'm enduring. It's tough but I'm enduring. Talk about me all you want. I am in. I'm enduring. So endurance has the ability to change your appearance. The next thing that we have to understand. That God don't want us to go higher. Without prepared for higher. Many of us we rush into position that we are not prepared for. And then we find ourselves further than where we were before. So God wants for us to not only pray for the breakthrough, but prepare for the breakthrough. So what God said to tell the people is that before you move on, get healing. Get healing before you move on. Get healing before you move. Come on, work this with me. Get healing before you move on. Why? Because there's a lot of persons, because they don't want to face the pain, they run from the pain and they try to build something else. So because I don't want to face the pain of the breakup, I rush into another relationship. And what we fail to understand is that what we are doing, Minister Kajim, is that we are building on broken foundations. 
whenever you don't get healing before you move on, what you're doing is you are building on broken foundation. And when you go in another relationship and the weight of that relationship come upon you and you start to crumble, you start to curse and say, I'm cursed. I'm going to be the next Paul. I don't have to get married. Oh, I don't have to go to no church. I can stay at my house and worship. And all of that conclusion you came to because you were building on broken found. Broken foundation. So, so we must prioritize healing. No, the next thing that we have to understand is that we cannot confuse neglect for healing. Not because I've forgotten about it, it doesn't mean that I'm healed from it. So, so we, 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 we sink the previous with the current and we think that it's not there. And we neglect, we, we confuse neglect with healing. And, and what you have to understand is that what that does is that, that brokenness and that broken foundation will only reveal itself whenever you are ready to transition to go higher. And it will stand as a security guard and says that you have to go through me in order to get to your next level. So brokenness or hidden brokenness will reveal itself whenever you're about to transition to the next level. Because sometimes healing is the price that we have to pay to go to the next level. So we have to go back and deal with some stuff before we get access to new stuff. It's like some people who link me and they say, you know, man of God, I want a loan. I want to buy a house. I said, good ready for the mortgage when i go and i check their credit report they have a bad credit card from three years ago and they thought that because i forgotten about it it would just disappear off my credit report but when they are not ready to buy a house they can't buy it because they have to go back and and, and deal with that bad credit that they have before they can get access to a new loan so they want to achieve a great goal by buying a house, but they can't do it because of something that they never fixed in the past. I'm going to kill a demon right here today. Because there are so many of us who want new things, but you have not yet dealt with the old things. And God is saying, I have to allow you to deal with the old things before I give you access to the new things. So whenever we are like this, what God will do is God will put weight on us. Because weight has the ability to reveal the broken areas within us. If I put some weight on a broken chair, the first part of the chair that will squeal out is the area that is broken. So God has to put some weight on you. Woman, woman and men, don't ever marry to somebody until you see the, how they operate under pressure. How they operate under weight. Because it can reveal a dirty side that you did not sign up for. I'm going to tell you something the devil don't want you to hear. You have to understand that God puts pressure on you to reveal the brokenness within you. And it's your job to put pride aside and go back to God and say God I'm broken and I need help. I'm not yet over Mary. I'm not yet over John. I was just kidding myself but God now I'm ready for my healing. I wish I have about several persons right here that will just lift your hands and say God I'm ready for my healing because healing is the price that I need to pay to go to the next level. I don't want to go into marriage toxic. I don't want to go into marriage broken.
women because I will be unfair to the woman that God sends in my life. Some of you better go back and put pride aside and deal with the internal issues. And what we do is we distract ourselves with external progress to take our mind off the internal issues. Oh God Almighty, I wish I'd learned this some time ago. We distract ourselves with external progress to take our mind off internal issues. And you have to understand that whenever you develop the outside, you will attract but you can't maintain. Whenever you develop the outside, you will attract but you can't maintain. Because the outside attract, but the inside is what maintain. And whenever you people enter into your life because of the product that you sell them. Oh, I'm a wonderful guy. I, I'm an amazing woman. And whenever persons enter in your life and they don't see that, they will become bitter. Because you have sold them a wrong product. I'm going to kill a demon in here today. You, you have sold them a wrong product. Be, because we prioritize the outside more than the... And that's why you, you, you can get a good woman, but you can't keep her. You, you will get a good man, but you can't keep him. You will get a big church with crowd, but as you look, it is empty. Because we prioritize the outside more than the... I love it when the church is quiet. The Bible says that there were silence in heaven for half an hour. There is silence in your church today, Minister Kajim. Now, the next thing that we have to understand, that in order to go to the next level, we either have to be pushed or we have to be lifted. If you want to go up, if you're climbing the rooftop, it's either somebody push you or somebody lift you. Now, sometimes God has to put us in a position where we are pushed. Because oftentimes we are so comfortable at our current level. And we are praying for a difference, but our action is betraying our declaration. So, we are praying that God, I want this, and God, I want that. God, I want my life to go this way, but my action is taking me another way. So, what God has to do, God has to allow circumstances to arise to push you. Because we have to understand that our next level is defined by our vision. Because... Everybody in here next level is different because everybody in here vision is different. So my vision determines what my next level is. So if I say I want to go to the next level, it could mean that I want to grow in corporate. Or I want to become a great preacher. So my vision determines what, what my next level is. Now... With that out of the way, the next thing that we have to understand is that in order for our vision to be manifest, in order for us to go to the next level, we have to understand that faith is what allows vision to be manifested. Vision cannot be manifested without faith. So you have to have faith to manifest your vision. No, you have to understand that everybody has a vision, but not everybody has faith. If you go to the man that you consider as the poorest man, he will tell you that I have a vision. But you have to understand that small faith cannot unlock big vision. So the greater the vision is the greater the faith. So faith builds vision, but challenges build faith. Oh God Almighty, let me repeat. I say, I say, Faith manifests vision, but challenges build faith. 
faith. And you have to understand that God is a faith builder. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is a faith builder. Yeah, he is a faith builder. God will allow challenges to happen in order to build your faith. He will push you in processes. Turn down the monitors a little bit. He will push you in processes in order to build your faith. Why? Because God is a faith builder. Are you here with me today? So, so what God will do, believers, we have to understand that if you run away from a challenge, then you are running away from an opportunity to build your faith. Because God puts you in challenges to build your faith. Are you here with me today? So God will put you in some processes to break you. My God, he will put you in some processes that will make a big man cry. Because God don't only know how to build you, but God knows how to break you. My God, and he will put you in some challenges that will wipe the smile off your face. He will put you in some challenges that will make you wonder if you're really called. My God, when Job was there and Job was praying for more, God was saying to Job, in order for you to get more, I have to put you through more challenges. So Job lost his wife, lost his family, lost his loved ones because what God was doing my God fix this what God was doing believe us God was building his faith somebody to think God was building his faith God was building his faith and what we have to understand the people is that the great of the challenge is the great of the faith yeah the great of the challenge is the great Man of God. Yet there are some people who have been in situations that was designed to build your faith, but because of your doubtfulness, you allowed it to take your faith. You allowed it to take your faith. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. Come on, work it with me. It won't happen to me. The devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. We, we, we can't allow what was sent to build our faith to take our faith. So when Job's wife said to him, why don't you curse God and die? Job said, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to allow what was sent to build my faith, to take my faith. I wish I have about several persons in here that can declare that I'm not going to allow what was sent to build my faith, to take my faith. You have to understand believers that after you have paid the price to build your faith, God will push you to your next level. Yeah, yeah, God will push you to your next level. And God puts you in that challenge in order to get you out of your comfort zone. Because you have to understand that your comfort zone is your danger zone. My God. Because whenever you are in a place of comfort, the enemy can and attack you like Adam and Eve. My God. Because your discernment has shifted. But whenever you are in warfare and you're standing in faith, you will understand, believers, that this was not sent to kill me, but this was sent to build me. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it is pushing you to your next level. It is pushing you to your next level. The next one is lifted. Somebody say lifted. Somebody say lifted. lifted. In order for you to be lifted, you have to be connected. In order for you to be lifted, man of God, you have to be connected. One of the greatest lies that the enemy tells us is that we can become great all by ourselves. 
you don't, you don't have to connect with, with Prophet Mahaland. You can be great all by yourself. And you have to understand that you, by, 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 by going after your next level by yourself, you will become good. But whenever you are connected, you will become great. Because it's not if one agree, but it is if two or more, come on, work this with me, agree over anything, it, it shall be so. So you have to be connected in order to be lifted. Are you here with me today? The woman with the issue of blood, she never touched Jesus, but she touched something that was connected to Jesus. Because whenever you are connected, you will always find solutions. Now, the next thing that we have to understand is that you can pursue it and chances are you can win. But you can win the battle, but you're too wounded to celebrate yes. the victory. Come on. You, you, you can win the battle. You are too wounded to celebrate the victory. I have nothing against independent women. Be independent all you want. But sometimes you can go to college and get your degree. Go in a good paying job. But you're lonely. Come on, man of God. Because you can win the battle, but you are too wounded to celebrate. The victory. Got all the success in the world. But you never develop your personality. And now nobody wants to connect with you. And you're like, if nobody wants me like this, then I'll be by myself. You have won the battle, but you are too wounded to celebrate the victory. And whenever we are in a position where we have gotten the victory... And victory does not feel like the way we expected it to feel like. It can mess with us mentally. If you look at Judas, Judas got what he wanted. But when victory never felt the way that he thought it would feel, he killed himself. And that's why connection is important. Because a good mentor will tell you, don't only focus on the outside, but focus also on the inside. Because whenever victory don't feel the way you thought it would feel, it can mess with you mentally. Spend all of my life going after my goals, but now I'm rich and lonely. Spend all of my life investing in ministry, ministry, and now a mighty man of God, and no one by my side. Jesus. Come on, man of God, preach. And you have won the battle, but you're too wounded to celebrate the victory. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that will not be you. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor. That will not be you. The next thing that we have to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm closing now. The next thing that we have to understand. Is that in order for us to become. Or go to our next level. We must be focused. Somebody say focus. Three more points and I'm done. You must be focused. Somebody holler focus. No we have to understand. That whatever we focus on. Determines how we feel. If you're feeling sad right now, it's because you're focusing on the things that are not going on good in your life. Because whatever you focus on determines how you feel. So if the enemy can control our focus, then the enemy can control our emotions. And if the enemy can control our emotions, then the enemy can uh, uh, affect the way how we make decisions. And we have to understand that your decision is the steering wheel of your life because your decision determines your destination. So we have to be focused. Somebody holler focus. focus. Now the next thing that we have to understand is that in order for us to be focused, we have to control the way how we think. 
We have to control the way how we think. Now, what is thinking? Thinking is the process of asking and answering questions. Whenever somebody say they are thinking, what they are saying is, I am asking and answering questions. So if I ask myself a lousy question, then my mind is going to give me a... My mind is going to give me a lousy answer. So, so what I have to do is, I have to change the way how I think. I'm going somewhere. No, there are four dimensions in which the mind spends its time. The first one is the dimension of distraction. Whenever your mind is in the dimension of distraction, what you're doing is, whenever you face challenges or difficulties, you will do things that gives you immediate pleasure to take your mind off your current challenges. So whenever I face difficulties, the first thing I do is I go and smoke a spliff and get high. I drink until I can't think. Because I'm doing something that will give me immediate pleasure that will take my mind off my difficulties and my challenges. But, but whenever I do that, believers, what I am doing is I am setting up myself for failure. Because whenever you put off your responsibilities, you must understand that unattended responsibilities will always lead to future chaos. Unattended responsibilities will always lead to future chaos. Because when I put off, what I'm basically doing is I'm making today light by making tomorrow heavy. And when I step into my tomorrow and I can't do what I should do, I get mad. My God, because I've put off my responsibilities. I'm going to hit you and quit you right here. The next one is the dimension of delusion. Somebody said delusion. No, no, what we have to understand is that there is a thin line between faith and folly. Faith and folly has the same declaration but different approach. Faith says, I will become great. Folly says, I will become great. But faith says, I will become great and I will work hard towards it for it to happen. But folly says, I'm going to sit and wait for it to come. And there's a lot of people who are living in the dimension of delusion. We are telling ourselves a lie because we are not working towards what we are declaring. In other words, we are not preparing for what we have prayed for. And whenever you don't prepare for what you have prayed for, it is unfair to the manifestation of your prayer. Oh God, I want a good wife, but are you a good husband? Oh God, I want a mighty man of God that can pray and pray and pray. But, but, but can you cover a man of God like that? We are living in the dimension of delusion. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's not me. That's not me. The next dimension is the dimension of demand. It's where we are only progressive when life demands it and other people demands it. Yeah, yeah. If people don't push me, I don't make destiny decisions. If life don't push me, I don't go towards my goals. So God has to allow circumstances to push Push you into your calling. And that's the, di the fourth one is the dimension of fulfillment. In that dimension, what we do there is we do things that are important even when they are not urgent. So I pray because it is important and not urgent. There are some people who only pray when it is urgent. But I pray because it is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only fast and pray whenever it is urgent. And whenever you want to go somewhere that you know you don't do the work to go. But you somehow you just want to go. Oh God, I want to preach this Sunday. But you did not prepare and pray 
and go into the Lord's presence. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have to allow your mind to be focused and do the things that are important even when they are not urgent. My God. So we have to understand, believers, that whenever you are focused, I'm ready to preach now because I see you want to sleep on me and I, and I know we need to go into the next session. We have to be focused. Somebody say focus. Hey, yeah, yeah. Talk your neighbor in the side. Let them jump. Say focus. Oh yes, oh yes. We have to be focused believers because whenever you are focused, you will know which battles to fight. Yeah, because when you are focused, you will understand that some battles were sent to distract you and some battles were sent to empower you. My God, there are some battles that were sent to distract you and there are some battles that were sent to empower you. So when David went to God and David went on the battlefield, David's brother came to him and said, what are you doing here? You're up to no good. But David said, is there not a cause? My God, because David was not willing to fight with his brother because there is no benefit in fighting his brother but there is a benefit with fighting Goliath because if I fight Goliath and if I kill Goliath then my life will change but if I fight my brother I will be stuck but if I fight my Goliath I will go higher look at your neighbor's neighbor don't fight against your brother just fight against that generational curse my God now you have to understand believers that David was anointed look at your neighbor and say I am anointed I feel preaching coming right here look at somebody and say I'm anointed now you have to understand believers that David was not only anointed for the throne but David was also anointed for the journey my God he was not only anointed for the throne but he was also anointed for the journey because there is no throne without the journey there is no pain without the promise there is no process without the promise yeah yeah so once you are anointed for the throne you are also anointed for the journey so it makes no sense for me to run from my Goliath when I'm anointed to kill this Goliath it makes no sense for me to run from this rejection when I was anointed to kill this rejection it makes no sense for me to run from this backsliding spirit when I was anointed to kill this backsliding spirit look at your neighbor's neighbor every challenge is that surround your promise you're anointed to kill it so tell Potiphar and his wife that I'm anointed for the palace so you can stop this you can talk but you can stop this you can persecute but you can't stop this you can talk bad about me but you can't stop this because I'm anointed for this now you have to understand believers that David was anointed to be a king my God he was anointed to be a king which means Pastor Brown David was anointed to protect yeah yeah when the sheep came my God he killed the lion when the lion came for the sheep when the bear came my God he defeated the bear because whenever the issue that you were anointed for a rise your anointing will activate I'm going to kill a demon right here whenever the issue that you were anointed for a rise your anointing will activate and that's why some people they will come and they will sit and they will act like they can't mash hands but as soon as an unclean spirit enter into the atmosphere all 
of a sudden uh, something in them activates uh, leprosy uh, the other day my family called me uh, and they say Shamar uh, your uncle Noel is in the hospital uh, it seems like tumor is in his brain uh, Shamar your cousin Jafari uh, is in the hospital uh, something is wrong with his chest uh, and all of a sudden uh, something just erupts in my spirit uh, and I went down in prayer uh, and started to prophesy uh, started to declare uh, started to believe uh, and by the next day uh, they called me and said good news uh, the doctor said they don't know what happened uh, but it's not there anymore uh, because whenever the issue arises uh, that you are anointed for uh, your anointing will activate uh, I feel my anointing activating uh, I feel your anointing activating uh, because there is a Goliath uh, that is standing before you but the anointing uh, is about to be activated Somebody showed activate. Somebody showed activate. When when everybody was fear and everybody was in fear, David went before them and said, "Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is talking bad against my God? Who is this generational curse that is threatening my progress?" that is threatening my elevation I must go higher look at your neighbor and say I must go higher you don't go higher in comfort but you go higher in pressure you go higher in fire my God all of David's life David had greatness in him but his family was hiding his greatness Jesse was hiding his greatness his brothers was hiding his greatness but when Goliath came his greatness was revealed and God is saying to somebody that your greatness is not revealed in comfort but your greatness is revealed in warfare Labakasai you're running from the warfare but it's going to activate something it's going to reveal something I never know that I was anointed until church folks tamper with my name I never know that I was anointed until family member tampered with my name I never know that I was anointed until best friends stabbed me in the back but when they did it it revealed something something is being revealed right here there is somebody in here who is going through hell but one not dead no call it dopey labakasai I say it's revealing something anointing reveal because external pressure will always activate internal power so come with the fire it's activating something come with the warfare it's activating something so the Bible says that he went to Saul and he said Saul I am ready no he did not went to Saul empty handed but he went with his resume my God look at your neighbor and say neighbor where is your resume I'm going to kill a demon right here today where is your resume are you proven are you tested are you tried have you ever been to mock and rough where is your resume but look at your neighbor and say neighbor I've been tested I've been tested because what David was saying is that Saul I am capable look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm capable you see the reason why David had 
so much faith it's because David remembered look at your neighbor and say neighbor remember remember you see you have to understand believers that whenever you are faced with current challenges you have to remember previous victories yeah whenever you are faced with current challenges you have to remember previous victories remember when the landlord give you notice but you fall back on your feet remember when your marriage was in hell but you fell back on your feet remember when you were diagnosed but you fell back on your feet so if I win back then then there is nothing of demon in hell to stop me from winning now I'm coming for my glory I'm coming for my victory I'm coming for grace I'm coming I'm coming so David believe us Saul was giving him don't mess with the flow so, so Saul was giving him his own anointing his own armor and his own shield my God but David said I have not tested your shield and your armor in other words I don't feel confident in another man's armor I don't feel confident in another man's identity there are some people if they don't preach like Noel Jones they don't feel confident if you don't prophesy like Pastor Brown you don't feel confident but the victory will not come by you operating under another man's anointing the victory will come when you step in your own anointing look at your neighbor say be yourself preach like yourself dress like yourself so the bible says that he went to the battlefield and goliath was there and goliath says who is this young man that you send i'm gonna kill him i'm gonna destroy him but look at your neighbor say neighbor stand firm shift right here look at somebody and say stand firm because you have to understand that David was not by himself but David was with Jesus if you remember in Genesis when God prophesied the seed that the seed will come my God the Bible says that and Eve had two sons Cain and Abel Cain slew Abel God raised up Seth from the lineage of Seth came a man by the name of Noah Noah had three sons Shem, Ham and Japheth from the lineage of Shem came a man by the name of Terah Terah had a son by the name of Abraham and God told Abraham in your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed he told Isaac and he told Jacob Jacob. When we look at the life of Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons that will eventually become the children of the tribe of Israel. Now the Bible says that from the lineage of them, the Bible says that Joseph, my God, Jacob, he had two sons, my God, and when you chase the lineage, the Bible says, my God Almighty Jesus, that from fairies be got Hezron, Hezron begot Ram, Ram begot Aminadab, Aminadab begot Nathan, Nathan God begot Meshikabet, Lebrokosai, and the lineage end with David, so now David is carrying the seed that was prophesied over Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, so when David went to Goliath, David had the seed in him, he had had Jesus in him and that's why he declared that you come to me with your spear with your shield but I come before you in the name of the Lord look at your neighbor say neighbor once you have God your Goliath will die I'm small in body but I'm big in God I'm small in body but I'm big in God. So the Bible 
Bible says that he took his slingshot and he swing it. I wish I have about several persons that will just sling it. Come on, sling it. Come on, wheel it. Wrap back aside. Come on, wheel it. As you wheel it, remember the issue. As you wheel it, remember the pressure. As you wheel it, remember the rent. As you wheel it, remember the pain. Come on, somebody release it. was defeated. Look at your neighbor and say, it is done. It is well. Come on, rejoice in the spirit. What the Lord said, Pastor Kino, is that in order for you to go higher, you have to defeat something that is higher. Your Goliath was high. You know you have defeated your Goliath. No, you are taking the position that you have been praying for. Some of you better understand that when Goliath was defeated David cut his head off it means that there is no more hope for your Goliath to come come on somebody rejoice because your Goliath is dead I say your Goliath is dead Laba Cassandra your Goliath is dead come on somebody give him a praise I'm done. So in order for David to go higher, he had to defeat something that was higher. Whenever God wants you to grow, he will always send a warfare that is beyond you. Beyond you. There are some of you right now you're under pressure because you're fighting a Goliath that is beyond you. But if you will just have the faith, if you will just have the courage, you will kill that Goliath. Come on, somebody give him praise. I say your Goliath is dead. Lepokosanda, your Goliath is dead. As I look at this young man, man of God, the Lord said to tell him, prepare for international ministry. <laughs> prepare for international ministry. Because the ministry that the Lord has blessed you with, it is not for local, but it is international. The Lord said, I've made you a promise and I've not forgotten about that promise. The Lord said, I have not forgotten about that promise. I'm going to make it happen. What's, what's the guy's name? Chandler Moore. Chandler Moore. A grace. A end time grace. I said the grace that is coming upon you you will come under heavy warfare but the Lord said to tell you that I have anointed you for this you are not only anointed for the promise but you are anointed for the process the Lord said don't be afraid of their faces you are anointed for this the Lord said watch my hand you are going through the process you are going through the development season but watch my hand There is a grace there is a grace you will even write songs the Lord will begin to download songs in your spirit father I cover your son I declare
spirit that is covered. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Your warfare days, days are over. Your crying days are over. Yeah. The Lord said you won't have to fight anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. Because I'm about to give you a peace that's going to surpass all understanding. You are fight to get everything that you have today. There are so many war fears that you have entered into. There are many people who fought against you. But the Lord said, I have allowed it to happen in order for you to activate the warrior that is inside of you. The Lord said, greater grace is coming. Peace is coming. There is a peace that is coming upon you. Woman of God, I cover you and I decree and declare the peace of God and the grace of God upon you. In the name of Jesus, take it. Peace come upon your daughter. Peace come upon your daughter. Take it. Come on, somebody give him praise. I'm not going to be on fear and take up all of the time. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm done. Father, I decree and declare that every Goliath that had presented themselves before your people, we decree and declare that those Goliath won't stand a chance. I decree and declare that uncommon grace will be upon your people. It was not by accident why, why David took five stones. It was a representation of grace. Because you were telling him that he was graced for this battle. I decree and declare that whenever your people stand before their Goliaths, they will know that they were graced for this. I decree God that as they defeat their Goliath, their lives will change. Nowhere in the scripture had David used his slingshot again. He upgraded his weapon because God upgrade his league. I decree and declare that you will upgrade your people league today in the name of Jesus. I decree supernatural blood coverage, supernatural grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Cover them and bless them in Jesus mighty name. Man of God, you're, you're going to help me with this because I don't normally do this. But I want to pull a seed. And the seed that you're going to, I don't care how much it is, if it's a million or it's a thousand or a hundred. But I want for you to sow into this world because there are so many of you, your next level is blocked by a Goliath that is in your family and in your generation and as you lift your faith and you sow the seed as a sign that God I am ready to destroy this Goliath nobody in my family has ever made it to a particular level but God I want to defeat this Goliath every woman in my family they just get pregnant out of wedlock but God, I want to destroy this Goliath in my family. I want for you to come and sow a seed today. Ah, you got an instruction? You want to say something? Go ahead. Don't, don't move, man of God. I know some of you have come already. But before you came, man of God, before you came on, the Lord gave me instruction concerning the seed. And we had to forego the offering to allow you to just flow in the anointing. But when you started speaking, you confirmed what the Lord said to me through your word. The Lord said to me, in this first session, let us lay a foundation offering. And I heard you mentioning the 12 tribes of Israel. That was the foundation for the lineage that David came from which further on Jesus came from. 
the foundation for the seed that was in David that allowed him to conquer his Goliath. I heard the Lord said, let's lay a foundation. Can we lay a foundation, believers? Oh, can we lay a foundation, believers? Now, I don't want you to lose the anointing here because this is serious. So, hold, hold it, hold it, auntie. We want to give an instruction. We want to give an instruction. I believe in this session that there are six persons. Just six. Not for everybody. Just six. That can sow a seed of $2,000. Six of us. I will be the first one. $2,000. So if you have already given and you have the ability to add to that, come and re redeem the rest. But if you have not yet given, I'm challenging six of you, just come and stand with your 2,000. Just before you give it, just come and stand. Come and stand. Come and stand. There are at least six of you. We are laying a foundation. Six times two. Six times two. Twelve. There are six of you. This is just the foundation we have other sessions to go. We declare today that we are going up higher. But the man of God declared that going up higher requires sacrifice. It requires... I know $2,000 is not a sacrifice for many of you. But we are starting here. For some it's, it's nothing, but for some it may be everything. One, two, three, four, five. We're at six. All right, so we're at seven. It's an overflow. Is there anyone else that will sow? And I, I, won't, I won't disenfranchise you. The man of God is going to pray over you. I know he wants to go and change, but I am opening the floor for this foundation seed. For this foundation seed. Yes. More are coming more are coming. I wonder if God will bring it to 12. I wonder if God will bring it to 12. Come. Come. Don't say it's too early for me to sow. Don't say it's too early. Let's lay this foundation. Let's lay this foundation. Let's lay this foundation. Rebo Simaniana. Come on. Stay in the spirit. Something is happening here. Those at the altar begin to pray over your seed because something is being released. Brokenness in the earth causes openness in the heavens. Shelebende bradile makotos. Shendo korende lebe sabradileba. Sapande lebe kuradisa. Is there anyone else that will answer the challenge today? That will answer the challenge today? That will answer the challenge today. That will answer the challenge today. The